Okay, I want to address the hat in the room. Yeah, I'm wearing a hat. But if you wake up and put on a hat with your hair wet and it dries under there, you've kind of committed to wearing a hat the rest of the day. You can't take it off because you'll just look like a pedophile. Welcome to this episode of Movies with James. Today we're talking about The Girl on the Train. Now, this is a movie made up from a book, and guess what? I'm excited because this is the first time I got to see a movie that's made about a book that I read. Check it. Boom! I did it. See, I've uh, pretended to read books and watch movies like I told everyone I read Harry Potter, I told everyone I watched Inferno and The Da Vinci Code. I didn't. I'm a liar. I know what you're probably thinking. James, why would you read a book? Books are stupid. I agree. Here's the thing though. Like about a few weeks ago, I was kind of in a weird place. I think I may have had a small aneurysm. I was reading books. I was cleaning up after myself. I was waking up before noon. I was out of control. But don't worry about me. I'm back to my piece of shit self. So don't worry about me. I'll be okay. When it comes to um, movies based off books, they're, pro they're you're guaranteed to suck. They're going to suck. That's how it works. You know, it's like the production company's like, hey, you wrote a good book that made a lot of money. Can we fucking ruin it? And the author's like, I don't really want to ruin the book. We'll give you shitloads of money. All right, ruin the fuck out of it. And that's how these movies are made. But they're fun. They're fun to watch. And it's kind of cool to see how, you know, writing can transfer to film and how poorly it's done. It's entertaining. Anyway, we got a lot of disgusting to do about this movie. I mean, I have a lot I want to say. This is going to be an in-depth talk. This is going to be a birds and the bees talk. Speaking of the birds and the bees talk, fun fact, I never actually got the birds and the bees talk. I got a sex talk, but they never brought up the birds and the bees, so I have no idea how pollination works. All right, so The Girl on the Train currently is at a 45% on Rotten Tomato, but it's the first day it's out, so it's probably going to drop. I guarantee it's going to drop, actually. So The Girl on the Train stars Emily Blunt, Justin Theroux, Rebecca Ferguson, Haley Bennett. We have Allison Janney, Luke Evans. You got... Phoebe and Donna, it's a party, okay? It's a party of cast members. I wasn't so sure about Emily Blunt and Justin Theroux. They didn't really fit the bill. Luke Evans, though, he's exactly how I pictured Scott, so good job there, casting. Laura Prepon, I think that's her name. I'm just gonna call her Donna. She's Donna. We all know her as Donna. Donna with black hair. She played Kathy, um, the roommate to Emily Blunt's character, who's Rachel. Uh, when I pictured Kathy in the book, she looked more like Kathy Bates. So yeah, a bit of a bit of a um, casting error there, but maybe that's my imagination. I don't know. The girl on the train basically follows the story of Rachel, who's this kind of alcoholic girl who goes on a train back and forth, back and forth every day. No job, alcoholic, divorced. She kind of just like watches people on the train. One day she uh, watches something that she shouldn't have seen, but she was drunk, and she's like, "What happened?" And a girl, Megan, disappears, um, and they're like, "What happened?" And no one knows what happened because. Uh, Rachel was drunk and didn't know what she remembered and all the cops were like what happened to Megan? But Rachel's just a mega loser sits on a train all day going back and forth back and forth and just watches Families and people and makes up names for them and like kind of just pretend she's part of their family. She's just a loser. She's a uh, Alcoholic fat nasty girl at least in the book. She's she's kind of good looking in this one So I kind of was bugged by that but movies love to over sex it so they can't make a accurate portrayal of just a disgusting alcoholic lady. They have to make her, you know, Emily Blunt. So as you can assume, they butchered the fuck out of this movie. It, it, it's a, uh, I mean, it's a Texas Chainsaw Massacre here. The book is written in first person, so it's like Rachel's diary or Megan's diary of what happened. And that's very difficult to put in a movie because then it would just be a pure internal monologue. And that's kind of like a really hard thing to do in movies. So it didn't transfer at all. It didn't transfer at all. Also, there's a million different events that just, they don't show in the movie. They just don't show them. They're just like, oh, no. Um, they took a lot of artistic liberty. They just made stuff up and just added stuff. And like, yeah, fuck it. They change about 45% of all the actual events and the story and a lot of just scenarios that they don't show. So I always wonder how that goes down with the production company and the author, Paula Hawkins, of their actual book. Paula probably asks the production, excuse me, why are you guys um, changing the whole story? And the production's like, hey, Paula, can you uh, go fuck off? So that's my assumption. But let's get deep into this movie. All right, so the goods of this movie. The one thing I really, really liked about this movie, and I usually don't notice acting that much, but Emily Blunt did a killer job. Now, she was way too pretty to be disgusting Rachel from the book, but they pulled it off. She was great at acting, like just pathetic, and you want to feel sorry for her. Like when you read the book, she's just nasty, gross, pathetic, loser. She's really a get in it. Like the whole, the whole concept of the movie is that she keeps wanting to get into this investigation even though she's not even part of it. She's like, I want to be important. She's just calling everyone. She's being a total narc, get in it, know it all. It's very annoying. She's like, she's, I don't like her. She's a bad person. I don't like her. But Emily Blunt really made you just go, oh God, oh, you're nasty. Don't stop drinking on the train. She's alcoholic. So she's always getting drunk and looking like shit. 
but she actually has a pretty nice figure going on. She's pretty, so it's like, hmm, she's not that bad. The casting wasn't perfect, but her acting ability was amazing, like, especially the end. The whole movie, the beginning part, they really do a bad job of actually showing the chronology of the story. Um, that's probably because the book, you know, a lot of it is just like going back and forth, back and forth between characters and explaining the, the relationships and building on that and slowly developing the story. In the movie, it's like, this happens, this happens, this happens, that's it, climax. So they really don't do a lot of development and you kind of get confused. Like if I didn't read the book, I'd be like, what the hell's going on? What the, someone's missing? They really don't touch on the actual like plot points. They'll show a dramatic scene of Rachel, Emily Blunt, just being drunk and pathetic and then flashbacks and they want to kind of show the disorientation of being drunk and not understanding what's going on, which is kind of the whole story of the movie of how she doesn't know what happened because she's always drunk. But the conflict is that a neighbor of Rachel's or past neighbor is missing and we don't know where she is and Rachel was spotted in the area when she was missing and she was drunk, but that's, I wouldn't know that from watching the movie because they kind of just go, Megan's missing, oh, other things going on, Megan's missing, like they really don't, really don't press the issue of, yo, a chick's missing, and then from the minute she's missing to the other climax, is like, it's like that, they really don't push on that, but they save it a little bit because in the end, they, they really do the, the, um, the, the big just cinematic finale where it's just like da 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 da, that kind of stuff, the, the real blood pumping stuff, that was accurate, the very end, the last like, mm, 20 minutes of it, really accurate to the book, and exactly what I pictured. So Emily Blunt, killer acting, and the last 20 minutes, really well done. The rest, dog shit. Another thing that it's not necessarily good about it, but a thing that I understand that they did, that I kind of commend them on, the book is written that every chapter is just like a cliffhanger. That's why it's probably such a, you know, best-selling book is because you keep reading it. Like, I read my book in like three weeks, and I'm a slow-ass reader, so that's pretty fast. I was pretty compelled. Every chapter, it's like, oh, and then there was a mysterious figure. What? Who's this mysterious figure? You read the next chapter, it's a different person. You don't even know who the mysterious figure is. You don't get to find out who the mysterious figure is until like five chapters after that. So it's one of those books where like, kind of like Game of Thrones where like each chapter is a different character. So you keep reading because you want to know what happens and then you find out what happens. You're like, okay, that, that's what happens. Basically, the, the book is basically just YouTube clickbait. Check this out. Ooh, I gotta tell you a secret. My last video, my deepest secret. I can't believe she did this. Oh my goodness, my first car, that kind of stuff but in book form. But the movie didn't have any of that in there because it's a movie and it needs to be shorter, but I like how they kind of got away with the whole just prolonged story, but I guess that's just what movies do. All right, it's ripping time. We're gonna rip this movie a new one, let's go. Number one, the book is about a girl on a train in England. So I'm like, okay, she's in England. The main character, Emily Blunt, has an English accent. Okay, we're in England. This is just identical to the book. An English girl on a train. I don't really ride trains in America. There'll be no trains in America. Who rides trains in America besides conductors and nine-year-olds? But apparently, the production company was like, hey, Paula, yes? You know how you wrote a book about people in England? Yes? Well, we're gonna, um, you know, scratch that and just put it in New York. Well, what about the main character? Well, she can be English. What? We fucking hate you. So they just make the story in New York, in America, but they have an English person in there. So we have one English person. Oh, and in the book, there's a psychiatrist. His name's Camille Abdick. What nationality do you think of when you hear that name? I'll give you a second. Indian. Clearly Indian. But the guy in the movie, he was like Mexican. He's like, loco, 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 loco. He said loco, so that's clearly, you know, Spanish. He made it in Spanish. But the point is, I feel like all the actors are like, excuse me, director, what accent should we use? And the director was just like, I don't, just fucking, whatever you want. The actor who plays the psychiatrist is like, can I do a Spanish accent? Sure, I don't care, just do it, okay? Emily Blunt's like, can I just do my normal voice? Sure, I don't care, we're making a shitty movie, go! Jesus. So everyone's just doing random accents, it's very confusing. They're in New York, but it's about a girl on a train going by houses. I don't know any trains that pass houses in New York, but I've never been to New York, so I don't know. I just don't get why they couldn't have put it in like the city it was based in. When they make a movie out of a book, they usually keep at least the same country involved. That's kind of a rule of thumb. Like, you don't see Hogwarts based in Jersey. Hey, Harry, you're a fucking wizard. Just keep the story in the same country and don't have random accents of random people. It's so stupid. They also oversexed this movie so much. The movie involves a little bit of sex. Also, Rachel and Scott don't bang in the movie. They bang in the book. That's a big moment. They bang in the book, but they don't bang in the movie. Uh, this, uh, let's, no, let's not have that. No, let's have other people have sex that don't even have sex in the, in the book. So they have all this like really steamy, really just a lot of nudity, but not like super nudity. Like the kind of nudity where it's like, okay, I don't see any nipples, but it's total nudity. They're trying to Fifty Shades of Grey this movie with all like a whole sexual thriller. When it's not, it's about a drunk chick looking at people on a train. It's not a, it's not an erotic thriller. This is not Fatal Traction. This is not Basic Instinct. 
This is the girl on the train. The sad fat chick on the train drinking vodka. I mean gin. Not the steamy romance between people banging in the shower. I'm definitely not gonna identify every single change of the book from the movie. That'd be too much work and uh, I'm a lazy piece of shit, so it's not gonna happen. But basically they changed a lot of it. The ending is one thing that I, I like how they kept it, you know, 95% sane, but the rest was just, they just, chronology, what happened, what didn't happen. It's very vague, but it's a movie I understand. One last thing, the character Tom, who's played by Justin Thoreau, is Rachel, Emily Blunt's ex-husband. He's kind of described as kind of like a, just a dude, dude, not the best looking dude. He's played by Justin Thoreau. Yeah, this dude services Aniston. You want to tell me this guy's like a little, like, you know, just dude? They, they overcast. They made these people too good looking. They shouldn't have been that good looking, all I'm saying. Everyone should be just brought down like five points on the attractiveness scale. The, I mean, the book's about just a bunch of nasty British people humping and killing each other. There's no, like, just erotic, just romance going on. They're all just gross. But instead, like, no, let's have them all be really good looking and based in New York. Paula's like, but that's not the story. Paula, shut up. Get in the corner. We gave you your money. All right, fine. Okay, if I wrote a book and they were willing to give me millions of dollars to just ruin it, I Go ahead, I don't care. But that's about it. Look, they ruined the book, and the problem is it, does, it doesn't translate to film. The whole book is just like a, a, a diary, you know, first person perspective on a story that's in their heads. There's no talking really, it's very little talking. And the movie tried to do this whole disorientation thing when the only way to do that is to go back and forth in chapters. That's why the book works, because you can go back and forth and see what's going on. In the movie, you can't do that. You're like, what's going on? I'm confused. This is, makes no sense. It's too fast also, it's too fast. That's all I have to say about that. All right, let's rate this movie. I do it on five categories. Story, acting, production, creativity, and watchability. Let's do it. The story, I don't want to write the story because the story's from a book, but their version of the story was very incoherent and hard to understand. So I'm just gonna be fast and simple on this one. The story is a two. Acting was actually really well done. I loved it. I thought it was well done by um, Emily Blunt. She's a great actress. I uh, like her a lot. She's married to Jim from The Office. Fun fact, I know my stuff. Jim's my man. So I'm gonna give acting, just because of her, let's, let's do a four on acting. Production, production was terrible. It was incoherent, it was going back and forth, back and forth, when that's a book thing you can't do. It's like infinite jest. You can't flip flop the whole book with the end notes. That's too difficult. They try to compress the story into you know a time frame that would not make sense because the whole reason the book works is because you're building relationships and then they're broken. In the movie, they don't build the relationships, they just kind of establish them and do them, and there's no like, you don't really feel the emotion. They don't build the relationships. So, the production, the way they filmed it and set it up in sequence, which you could call it the story, but I think it's more of a production issue, it's a one. Creativity, they took it from a book and made up dumb stories. It's not creative at all. I guess it's creative in the fact that they like, let's just make all the ugly British people attractive New Yorkers. That's kind of creative, shit creation, but let's give them a one. They deserve a one. Watchability. This is where it's terrible. I could not watch it. I was in the theater and I'm just like, usually in a movie I can at least watch a movie, especially when I'm like trying to like watch it and relate it to the book. But I'm like, oh my God, this is so boring. So the watchability, it's a zero. I literally almost walked out of the movie and I never do that, zero. Two plus four plus one plus one plus zero. It's eight. Eight times four. It's 32. 32. Official score of The Girl in Train is a 32. I feel like eventually Rotten Tomatoes is going to drop it down to 32 because it's the first week. People still have the taste of the movie in their mouth and they're like, hmm, maybe it'll get better. And then they're going to go, oh wait, no, this tastes like dog shit. But yeah, it's a 32. When it comes to bad movies, it's not like below 30. That's a really bad movie. It's a 32. It's like, oh, that's a shit movie, but it's not like the worst movie. Honestly, if you haven't read the book, I would not go watch the movie. You're actually going to hate it. It's not entertaining. So it's a mystery movie but it's not like that mysterious or surprising. They do this thing where they try to hide the face of people in the scenes, because the whole book is about, oh, Rachel saw someone, but she wasn't sure who it was, blah, blah, blah. But in the movie, you can't do that, because you, if you show someone, I kind of know who it is based off their body shape. Plus the, um, the whole finale surprise of the mystery solved, it's not that surprising. It's not like, oh, oh, wow, this is revolutionary. This is insane. This is crazier than predestination. This is crazier than seven. It's not that surprising. So don't go watch it. It's not entertaining, it's not fun. Don't go see this movie. You're probably gonna wanna see this movie because it's like, oh, it's based off a book, but just read the book. It's not, it's way better. And I know I sound like a dumb nerd saying that, but you know what, I do sound like a dumb nerd saying that. What am, oh, jeez. I sound like a dumb nerd, but what am I gonna do? God. Well, I guess I'm gonna be a dumb nerd on this one. I hate being a dumb nerd, but. Oh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You know what, don't do anything. Don't, don't, don't read the book, don't see the movie. Just, just do something else. Go play Xbox. Go, go run a mile. Go on a canoe, I don't care. Don't watch this movie, it sucks. All right, well thank you for joining me on this episode of Movies with James. Um, it has been a pleasure to review this movie. It's been a nightmare to watch it. It was, it was painful, like I was literally like, okay, I think I'm out of stroke, this is the worst. I'm freaking out, my epilepsy might kick in. But I, I sat through it for you guys, you're welcome. 
And I would appreciate it if you guys would like, comment, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter. I made one. I have like eight tweets. It's getting pretty crazy. So do that. Um, and I'll leave you with this. The moral of the story is don't get drunk on trains and you'll be fine. Have a nice life.